Hello everyone and welcome to another Sunday Afternoon Chat. This Sunday Afternoon Chat is coming to you from cold, rainy Charlotte, North Carolina. That's right, Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm here working the MLF Championship. I think they call that championship the Red Crest Tournament. It's where their final year in event, where you qualify for their final year in event, $300,000 to the winner, $300,000 for the winner. Uh, I'm working uh, at the Tracker Bass Pro Ranger booth. I'll be there th today from uh, 11 o'clock in the morning till about probably about four o'clock this afternoon, 3.30 or four o'clock. I'm gonna run to the airport, catch a plane, run back home to my beautiful wife, Chris, take her back to the ranch tonight. But uh, we had a tremendous crowd out there yesterday, huge crowd all day long, had a lot of fun. So be sure and get out to, if you're anywhere around within a couple of hours of Charlotte, North Carolina, get out there today for the Major League Fishing Championship. Uh, Brian Thrift is leading that tournament, a buddy of mine that was on the Chevy uh, truck team for years until Chevrolet got out of fishing. Uh, Brian Thrift is uh, leading that tournament. Um, another one of my friends, Jacob Wheeler, is up close to the top. I think Jacob, I think Jacob might be second right now, as a matter of fact. Edwin Evers is about fourth or fifth. And my buddy, the professional bowler, Otto I think held on to fifth place. Uh, when I, the last time I looked yesterday, he was still in 10th place and there was only just a few minutes left. So I believe Otto Defoe is in the top 10 also. Everyone will get a good payback payday today. It's a lot of money in this tournament. Uh, they, 15 people fished yesterday. The five people that were eliminated, uh, their payday was yesterday. They've got a check in their pocket, feeling really, really good. A lot of those guys that uh, fish this tournament will be running around out there today, signing autographs and fish with the people. My buddy Kevin Van Dam, we saw him out there several times yesterday. Roland Martin was here fr both Friday and Saturday. He is gone now. Uh, just many, many, many top professional fishermen out there. So. Uh, it's a great tournament. You'll be see all the new Ranger boats down there, all the new Tracker boats, all the new Nitro boats, and um, just a, a tremendous show. Mercury Motors out there, so if you got any questions with the Mercury people, they're there. Garmin's out there. Uh, many, many companies. My buddy Winston Tucker's got his uh, rods out there and reels, and uh, I didn't get to see Winston yesterday, but he did send me a note, let me know he's there. So uh, it's a great event. I think it... Uh, goes on until about probably uh, four or five o'clock this afternoon, maybe seven o'clock, I don't know. We closed at seven last night. I don't think it probably runs till seven on this final day, maybe five o'clock. But you have plenty of time to get out there, uh, get out there and, and, and go to Charlotte. Uh, it's uh, at the Coliseum, it's right by the Bojangles Coliseum. I don't really know exactly what that is, but you can look at, just Google up uh, Major League Fishing MLF Red Crest Tournament or MLF Championship. Just major uh, Google up Major League Fishing and you can find the location of that. Uh, we've had a great week this past week. I got to go fishing. I got to go fishing. That's exactly right. Uh, my buddies uh, uh, came down from uh, from Lucky Strike, Al Fisher, who's run that company all the, over there forever, and uh, Zach Bandy, the new owner of, of uh, the company. They brought John Scott up down there, uh, who is a professional fisherman that fishes from Oklahoma. And uh, this is kind of cool. He told me as a kid, as a 10, 11, 12 year old kid, uh, he watched our show every week and trying to learn about bass fishing and he wanted to be a, a bass fisherman and that's exactly what he is. And uh, we got to fish Tuesday. We uh, didn't fish all day. We fished uh, Tuesday afternoon. They actually fished over on, on uh, Arbuckle Lake that morning and, uh, and caught a couple of bass that weighed nine and a half pounds, a 9.50 and a 9.54, I believe is what they weighed. And uh, we brought those fish over and turned them loose uh, in Twin Eagle Lake right in front of my house. So those girls will get to spawn there. They'll get to live the rest of their life in a, in a perfect, beautiful heaven for them. They probably thought they had died and gone to heaven. They haven't died yet. They're still alive swimming around in Twin Eagle Lake and they should have a, a lot of really beautiful babies. And it's always good if you have a pond or private lake to be able to change the genetics around, continually change the genetics as you go on. And uh, so I do that frequently. Many times when I go and fish other lakes, I, I might bring a, a half a dozen fish or five fish back from OHIV or from Lake Fork or from Sam Rayburn or from Lake Texoma or Lake Tenkiller, wherever I'm fishing, just bring female fish early in the year like this where they've got a chance to spawn, bring them back in my live well. My ranger and my tracker both have extremely good aerated live wells. And I just put those fish in the line well, bring them back, turn them loose there at the house. I do it also with crappie. I brought a, a, about 10 big crappie last fall from uh, from uh, Lake Eufaula. Uh, Lake Eufaula's got great genetic crappie in there. I brought about 10 crappie from Lake Eufaula and turned them loose in the eagle. So it's good if you have a pond or a private lake or somewhere where you have permission to fish. Talk to the owner if he allow you to put some other fish in there. Just change the genetics around. Catch fish out of other bodies of water and carry them over there. That's perfectly legal as long as you stay within the state limits. 
Your limit is whatever it is. If as long as you bring a legal fish, you can move them around. You can flay them, you can eat them, you can put them in your, your, your pond at home, whatever you want to do. I don't know of any state where that's illegal. You might check your local regulations, but once you catch that fish, you can do pretty much whatever you want to with it as long as it is legal. So anyway, we got to fish uh, and we just had a smash up day. You know, I went out Monday evening uh, by myself about the last two hours before dark. And uh, I thought I started throwing a spinnerbait. I didn't have much luck on a spinnerbait at all. I caught one bass. It was kind of a two and a half or three pounder. I caught one bass and that's all. And so I moved out deep and I started seeing a few fish out deep on my Garmin live scope. Started throwing a deep smoothie, a lucky strike deep smoothie, the large size, run about eight foot deep. And uh, to get over the top of those fish that were down deep. And I caught six fish doing that. And they were nice. Like uh, one was a five pounder, one was a six pounder. The others were all nice, good quality fish. And uh, so the fish were out deep and I, I really did good. Uh, I saw a fish up shallow as I was getting ready to load my boat, uh, just look a couple foot under the water. So I picked my spinnerbait, throwed it over and brought it through it, caught that fish. It was a big crappie, about a pound and a half, pound three quarter crappie, a giant crappie. And uh, so I only caught eight fish that evening. But uh, we went out, we went out afternoon. It was probably one or one thirty when we got out. We actually had three boats on the lake. Uh, uh, my ranger and John had his boat and, and we took one of my trackers out, my tracker 195, my O'Reilly wrapped boat. And, uh, but we caught those three boats. We caught 103 fish that evening. That's right, 103. Uh, the boat that I was in caught 53 of those, uh, Al Fisher and I. Al caught most of his on a new scrounger prototype bait. It's kind of like a chatter bait. And uh, I caught all of mine on a spinnerbait. I actually caught one on a, I didn't catch him. I had one on a crankbait that I saw out. I saw three big fish, saw five, six, seven pound fish, three big fish together. And uh, and I threw out there with my crankbait and brought over the top of them. I, caught, I got one of them and he's a big fish, felt like five or six pounds and he come off. I never did see him. So I didn't catch that fish. So I caught all of my fish that I caught of those 53 on a red man spinnerbait. Uh, I caught them on a yellow and black, a yellow and black color. You know, they're biting, they're feeding a lot on bluegill right now. The bluegill are starting to move in shallow also. So a bluegill color or crawfish color is your best colors to throw right now, probably. Uh, don't worry too much about the shad colors. Right now, bluegill color and shark. So that yellow and black red man spinnerbait, it, it smoked them. I mean, it smoked them. I was actually throwing a chartreuse in white and wasn't doing much good on it. I, uh, Al was catching more than I was on, on that scrounger jig. And, uh, and, but once I changed that yellow and black, I started catching more on him. So it was a color was a really important thing. So if you've got some of those yellow and black red man spinner baits, right now is a good time to throw them. You could throw them as long as you have a lot of uh, bluegill around in the lake because the great all summer long, as a matter of fact, it's a great color. Yellow and black it's the colors that you have on bluegill. So it works out really, really good. Uh, so we had a great time fishing. Uh, that's the only day I got to fish was a Tuesday while I fished Monday evening and Tuesday. I am going to get to fish a couple of days this next week. Uh, my buddy Dennis Hamel from up in uh, Kansas and his son Scott and uh, grandson Johnny's coming down. I think Larry Schistel's going to come down and fish with us also, my buddy from Tulsa. And so we're going to get to fish Tuesday and Wednesday. It's forecast really nasty weather. I think the high Tuesday's about 46 and the high Wednesday's about 60 with some more rain. We did get rain last week. Uh, two nice rains. I think it totaled about 1.7 or 1.8 inch. Uh, Big Twin Eagle uh, Lake is up nice and only about a foot below my pier. Uh, the other lake is still low, but it's got more water in it than it had. It is coming up, but we still need a lot of rain to fill Big Canyon. We still need a lot of rain to fill Big Canyon, but Twin Eagle is in really, really good shape. Uh, we're gonna start planting our food plots this next week and uh, getting a lot of food out for the deer. We had a great week this week. I don't know if y'all got to see the new arrivals. Uh, Chris got a, a new toy this week, a jazzy electric wheelchair and she's moving all around the house with it and pretty soon she'll be driving around outside as well. She drives out to the car when we load her up and, 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 and go places. And uh, But uh, she'll be driving that, that out as the weather warms up and we get into summertime, she'll be driving out and feeding the, feeding the deer and stuff. And hopefully we have some babies that we get to rescue. We don't know, we'll just wait and see if uh, the mamas raise them all or we have to bottle feed one or two or three or four, we don't know. Uh, we have some yearlings that perhaps might have babies. If they do, we probably will take those babies away from them because they don't have much of a chance of survival with a yearling. This will be a, a deer that's only like six months old. And if they have babies, we'll probably take those and bottle feed them to give them a really good chance of making it. Um, we got two additional white doe this week. Uh, we named one Cinderella and the other Snowball. And, um, and so uh, we've got five white deer now, three bucks and two does. That doe is bred to, she's three years old. She's bred to a huge, huge champion buck. I mean, a buck like Prince Charming, maybe even larger. 
And uh, so she'll have two babies in April or May. Uh, we'll have babies coming up here pretty soon. So uh, those of you that love to see the baby deer being born, it's gonna start happening pretty soon. So let all your friends know. And uh, we, our viewership has dropped off a lot because it's got kind of dull and boring. I know on the Twin Eagle Ranch channel, it's uh, because uh, not much is happening. The deer have all lost their antlers and the other antlers have not started growing, but pretty soon those antlers are gonna start growing. It is an amazing thing to watch that. If you've never seen it, or if you have friends that have never seen the antlers start from nothing and grow to huge antlers just week by week by week, uh, get over there and have them subscribe to Jimmy Houston and Jimmy and Chris Houston's Twin Eagle Ranch channel. And remember, all of our fishing is on Jimmy Houston Outdoors Fishing. A channel, a new channel we, we broke off about a month ago. There's over 5,000 people on that channel. That channel should grow really, really rapidly because we put all of our fishing stuff there. We will have um, some of the fishing that we did down in Florida, Georgia on there uh, probably within this next week, probably be some of the fishing from Florida and Georgia. We had a great trip down there and uh, we'll be doing tips and many, many things on there. We put a, little, a lot of little shorts on there that are kind of fun to watch and, and, and things that will help you catch fish. Uh, this fishing season. So it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, this next week is a good week also. Uh, like I said, I've got Dennis and him coming in. I'm going to get to fish Tuesday and Wednesday. Thursday and Friday, those of you that are down around the Dallas-Fort Worth area, I will be in the Grapevine store. That's a store out by Fellowship Church at my buddy Ed, Ed uh, Young Jr. Pastors. Uh, out, that's the one out by the airport. I'll be there on uh, Thursday and Friday. I think I'm there Thursday from about three o'clock until six o'clock or seven o'clock that evening. On Friday, I think I'm there from about 11 till one. So I'll be at uh, that store in Grapevine. So be sure and come by there. By the way, this is the biggest sale of the year that goes on at the Bass Pro Shop store. So if you've got a Bass Pro Shop store anywhere around you, all over the nation, you can get your best prices right now. It's called the Spring Fishing Classic. Many of you got flyers that told all the incredible buys and savings that they have. They've got some unbelievable prices on just about everything from fishing lures, rod and reels, locators, boats, motors, uh, clothing, everything. I mean, just all kinds of things. You get camping gear. You're going to be camping this summer. They got great buys on camping gear. The biggest sale of the entire year is called the Bass Pro Shop Spring Fishing Classic. Uh, it's going on right now this weekend and it goes through next weekend, I believe at least. It's about a 10 day deal covering two or three weekends. I'm not exactly sure, but you can go to any Bass Pro Shop store in the nation. That's all so sales going on right now. My buddy Bill Dance was at the Tampa store yesterday. I don't know if Bill is back at that Tampa store today or not. Might check down there if you want to have a chance to go in and meet Bill and get an autograph, get a picture taken. He probably got one of them Tennessee hats. Don't wear that Tennessee hat. Do not do that. Get you a Bass Pro Shop hat. Let him sign that. Get you a Bass Pro Shop hat. Let Bill sign that. Hang on to that dude. Wait till he dies. Sell it on eBay. <laughs> oh, Lord, I apologize for that. <laughs> oh, my buddy Bill, my buddy Bill. But I don't know if he'll be back at the Tampa store today. I know he was there yesterday, but I think he may be back there today. I'm not sure. You can call down there at Tampa or just go down there and check and see if he's there. Um, so we've got a great uh, week this next week. The end of next week, we will be in Illinois. That's right, Freeport, Illinois, Park Hill Church. Park Hill Church, Freeport, in Illinois, next Saturday for a big, I think that's a wild game dinner. Uh, I, I, I believe, I, I haven't, it's been a while since I've checked on that. That church is about an hour from Chicago, so it's in an area where there's lots and lots of people. So if you're within, anywhere within a couple of hour drive of Freeport, it will be worth your drive to come over there next Saturday night. And I'll be there. I think that event starts at probably around five or six o'clock. You can check Park Hill Church, Park Hill Church in Freeport, Illinois. And it's going to be a great event. I'll be speaking that night. It'll just be a tremendous event. Uh, it's something you don't want to miss. It very well could be a total life changing event for you. I promise. That's how important it is. So if you're anywhere around within a couple, two or three hours drive of Freeport, Illinois, I'll be there next Saturday night. That's the, uh, what date is that? I'm going to look on my calendar. Uh, that's the, uh, that's the 18th. That's the 18th. Next Saturday night is the 18th. That's this coming Saturday. That's just right, right around the corner. So plan on being there. Freeport Church. I'll be talking a little bit more about that and give me some more details through the, throughout the week. I'll try to do a little short video and kind of explain a little bit more about what's going on there. But I get the opportunity and the great honor to speak at 20 or 25 churches a year. And uh, they're, they're, every one I go to are great churches. They're great people great people. I don't know if you go to church or not, but if there's something sort of missing in your life, if you seem like that things are just not going the way they should, maybe in your marriage, maybe in your family life, maybe it's your job, uh, maybe your finances, maybe your health, things are just not hunky-dory right now. Uh, you know, maybe you need a little bit closer relationship with God, and maybe you need to get involved in a local church. And uh, 
you know, maybe that'll be a, a good, just go in there to, that next Saturday night to, to Park Hill Church at Freeport, Illinois, and, uh, and, 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 and go see what's going on there at that event and see if God might be talking to you personally, individually, to try to make your life better. Because that's what God is all about. God loves you, and he's all about making your life better. Whatever you're going through, and like I said, your life might be hunky-dory right now. Everything may be fantastic. You say, Jimmy, I don't need God. Everything's going so good right now, I can't hardly stand it. That may be, but I'm telling you, life throws some real curves at us, some real curves. It might be a health problem, like a stroke, like my beautiful wife suffered. It might be getting fired from a job. It might be a, your child is just sort of going crazy right now. It might be that you and your wife or your husband are not getting along quite like you should. It may be that your kids have just sort of left the house and they don't call you or talk to you. It might be your health. It might be like a situation like Chris is going through where God is healing Chris every single day and bringing her back from that stroke where the devil tried to kill her. And people have asked me, because I made that statement before, said, Jimmy, do you really think the devil tried to kill her? I think he did. I think he did, yeah. And uh, But he was not able to do that. God saved her, and God is healing her, as a matter of fact. But uh, So if you get a chance, come to that church, uh, uh, Park Hill Church, Freeport, Illinois. And I'll have a little more information on that. Now, if you go over to our Facebook page, I know a lot of you are listening to this on Facebook. Facebook page, we'll have a, a, a post there about that that'll tell exactly what's going on all the times and everything. And uh, so uh, you, know, you can go over there and check that. We will have a video I'll, we'll post it sometime this week that kind of tells about a little bit more. But that's the week past and the week that we have coming. It's just a fantastic time. I am getting ready right now to leave this high rise hotel room. It's been a really nice hotel room. Leave this high rise hotel room and Uber or either can find me a friend that might be down and's going out there driving out there and I'll bump me a ride out to the uh, out to the uh, Major League uh, MLF Championship final day on Sunday the final day and I'll be there at uh, signing they open the doors at 11 o'clock I'll be there at 11 o'clock and uh, I'll be there probably until about three or four o'clock this afternoon before I fly back to Oklahoma so uh, if you're anywhere around a couple hours of Charlotte you want to go to that uh, event this afternoon it's going to be a great event a great event they got lots of giveaways lots of things are giving away there's lots of free stuff a lot of the booths have got stuff that they're giving away out there today and they're selling stuff with tremendous buys out there. And you can look at the, all of the White River Marine boats, the new Tracker boats, the new Ranger boats, the new Triton boats, the new Nitro boats, pontoons. You can look at all of that. You can visit with the Mercury people, the Garmin people, uh, all kinds of stuff. Exciting things happen out there today. And I think, I'm not positive, but I believe it's absolutely free. No charge to get in. No charge to get in. Can't be a deal like that. Guys and girls, go out there and have you a great week. You know, I don't know what this week's going to throw at me. I don't know what this week's going to throw at you. But I'm going to have a great day every day, irregardless. There'll be some bumps. There'll be some bends in the road. There'll be some stumbles and maybe even some falls. But when all that happens, pick yourself up, dust yourself up, and say, God, carry me on through this day. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to worship you. And I'm going to have a great day, no matter what. And remember... I sure do love you.